This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for August 13, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, a little woman stabbed to death in Hanover home. An 80-year-old woman was found stabbed to death at her home in Top Kendall, Hanover, Saturday night. The news understands that the woman, a returning resident, was found with several stab wounds by relatives. The deceased has been identified as Patsy Allen, a retired nurse. Information reaching the news is that relatives discovered the body of the now-deceased lying in a passage in her house with what appeared to be stab wounds. The police were summoned and Allen was taken to the hospital where she was confirmed dead. The body was later removed to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. No suspect has been identified in connection with the killing, neither has a motive been established. 59-year-old woman reportedly stabbed to death by brother in St. Anne a 59-year-old woman was reportedly stabbed to death by her brother in Thicket's district in Discovery Bay, St. Anne, on Saturday. The deceased has been identified as a Lynette Brady of Thicket's district, Discovery Bay, in the parish. According to the lawmen, around 5.30 p.m., Brady was attacked by her brother, who allegedly stabbed her several times. Police sources told the news that when residents learned of the incident, the brother was set upon by an angry mob which inflicted several wounds to his body. The police were called to the scene, and the brother was rescued from the mob, and the Brady was taken to hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The brother remains at the hospital under police guard. A motive for the killing has not been ascertained. Woman shot dead, husband and son escaped death in Westmoreland. A businesswoman was shot dead while her husband and son narrowly escaped death when they were attacked by gunmen at a Cooley Town district in Paradise, Westmoreland, on Saturday. The deceased has been identified as a 27-year-old Chantal Town district, Little London, in the parish. It was reported that around 3.30 p.m., Codner Whittingham, her husband and son, had driven into the community and parked when they were approached by four men armed with guns. Police said the men opened gunfire at all three occupants of the vehicle. The husband and wife went in different directions, and the gunmen chased and fired shots at them, and then left the area on foot. Codner Whittingham was found suffering from gunshot wounds to her head. The other occupants escaped unhurt. She was transported to hospital, where she was pronounced dead on arrival. Mechanic charged over St. Thomas knife attack. A 22-year-old mechanic from St. Thomas has been charged with wounding with intent following a fight with another man in the eastern parish last month. He is Twin Thompson from Bamboo River in Moran Bay. The incident took place in the community of Cottage Pen on July 29. The Moran Bay police say about 2.30 a.m. an altercation developed between Thompson and the complainant when it is alleged that Thompson used a ratchet knife to stab the complaint onto the left side of his abdomen. The man was assisted to the hospital where he was treated and released. On August 9, Thompson turned himself into the police where he was charged after being questioned in his attorney's presence. The police say a court date has not been finalized. Cabinet approves annual subvention to justices of the peace associations. Cabinet has approved an annual subvention to justices of the peace associations. This is intended to better coordinate their assistance to the Ministry of Justice in delivering client services across Jamaica. Justice Minister Delroy Chalk made that announcement during Thursday's commissioning ceremony for 93 new JPs for the parish of St. Catherine. The minister said one of the greatest challenges facing the ministry is the use of violence by many Jamaicans to settle their grievances. He encouraged the 93 new JPs to join the Justices of the Peace Association. All JPs are eligible to join the association in their parish and must pay an annual fee of $1,000 to become a voting member. The role of a Justice of the Peace is outlined in the Justices of the Peace Act 2018. Ms. Chen gone missing in St. Andrew. 
19-year-old Tanika Forrest, otherwise called Chin, a customer service representative of Hemingway Crescent St. Andrew, has been missing since Wednesday, August 10. She is of brown complexion, slim build, and about 160 centimeters or 5 feet 3 inches tall, and sports a braided hairstyle. Reports from the Duhaney Park Police are that about 8 a.m., Tanika was last seen at home. Her mode of dress then is unknown. All efforts to locate her since then have been unsuccessful. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Tanika Forrest is being asked to contact the Duhaney Park Police at 876-933-4280, the 119 police emergency number, or the nearest police station. Section of the Grill Main Road temporarily closed for repairs. The National Works Agency has advised that a section of the Negril Main Road in West Maryland will be closed to vehicular traffic on Sunday, August 13, 2023. The roadway will be closed in the vicinity of Hamanza Bakery between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. According to Community Relations Officer at the NWA's Western Region, Janelle Ricketts, the roadway is being closed to facilitate repairs to a section of it that has been compromised. During a period of the closure, motorists traveling from the direction of Savannah Lamar towards the Negril Town Center may turn left at the Ruby's Negril Service Station, travel on the Red Ground Roadway, then turn right in the vicinity of the Arthur Roadway, and then proceed onto the Negril Main Road. Motorists traveling from the direction of the Negril Town Center towards Savannah Lamar may travel via the Chapel and the Red Ground Roadways, Ricketts advised. Motorists are being reminded to obey the posted warning signs and the instructions of flag persons. Trelawney cops is still going after scammers despite a recent court hiccup. The police in Trelawney are assuring citizens that they remain vigilant in pursuing persons involved in lottery scamming and bringing them before the courts to face a prosecution. The assurance came after an uproar in early July that of the 71 cases relative to possession of identity information, or what is colloquially referred to as a lot of scamming, all the accused in 52 of the matters were acquitted by Chief Justice Brian Sykes in the Trelawney Circuit Court because of outstanding communication forensic and the cybercrime division reports. The information was revealed in a statement issued by Director of Public Prosecutions Paul Llewellyn shortly after the public outrage. Speaking to reporters on Thursday, head of the Trelawney Police, Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton said he understands the overall concerns of the public regarding the recent cases that were dismissed. But he reminded that a lot of scamming is an avenue used by criminals to fund their illicit activities and said the police must remain vigilant in their efforts to arrest the perpetrators of such acts. We recognize that as law enforcement agency, we must ensure that we have the requisite evidence with which the prosecution is able to advance a case in a court of law, said Milton. We have had a consultation with the personnel from the DPP's office, and since then, we have looked at a particular course of action that we can take to advance lottery scamming cases in the court in the future, he indicated. So I wish to assure the law-abiding citizens here in Trelawney that we are on top of these illicit activities, and this is really not a victory for persons involved in these illicit activities, but we are still pursuing these individuals, declared the top parish cop. The over 50 individuals were freed in the recent Trelawney Circuit Court sitting due to the long waiting time for reports on electronic devices from the Jamaica Constabulary Forces CFCD. Llewellyn, in her statement, said that the department was suffering from resource constraints high attrition rate of analysts who are able to attract higher remuneration locally and internationally, the number of analysts not have been commensurate with a very high caseload in the department, among other issues. In noting that some of the cases were on the circuit list in Trelawney from as far back as 2014, Llewellyn said because of the lapse of time, no evidentiary material can be retrieved or extracted from some of these devices that are in the custody of the police. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.